Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel if you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react to Shams Tabrizi and his 40 rules of love. Shams Tabrizi was a Persian Shafi poet who is credited as the spiritual instructor of Mevlana Jalal al-Din Muhammad Bakhi, also known as Rumi and is referenced with great reverence in Rumi's poetic collection, in particular Diwan Shams Tabrizi, the works of Shams of Tabriz. Tradition holds that Shams taught Rumi in seclusion in Konya for a period of 40 days before fleeing for Damascus. The tomb of Shams Tabrizi was recently nominated to be a UNESCO World Heritage Site. If you've been following this channel, you know that I have a fable for Sufism and Islamic poetry. So therefore, I'm very excited to watch today's video. With no further ado, let's have a look. How we see God is a direct reflection of how we see ourselves. If God brings to mind mostly fear and blame. It means there is too much fear and blames welled inside us. If we see God as full of love and compassion, so are we. Yeah, I don't really appreciate the whispering tone of this. The next rule, I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Nevertheless, yes, it is absolutely correct, of course, that God becomes a reflection of us. If you look at the atheist, for example, he does not believe in God. But at the same time, he's upset and he's angry and he's fearful of why God that supposedly does not exist is such a vicious God. People are dying. Children are suffering. There are wars everywhere. Poverty poverty, hunger and what not. What an unjust God. This of course just a reflection of them. They have those fears within them. They cannot accept life for what it is. It is similar to the vegan of course. The vegan cannot accept that the lion eats the gazelle. Oh, so bad, poor gazelle. They really do not understand that nature has its purpose and has to be the way that it is. And the same applies to any Anybody else, no matter if believer or non-believer, people simply cannot accept certain things in this world, certain things about God, and therefore they blame it then on God, but ultimately just a reflection of themselves. If you see, for example, many people in the so-called red pill community blaming women for being sluts, but then at the same time they're going after sluts. So who is the real problem here? The path to the truth is a labor of the heart, not of the head. Make your heart your primary guide, not your mind. Meet, challenge and ultimately prevail over your nerves with your heart. Knowing your ego will lead you to the knowledge of God. Yes, absolutely. Know yourself and you will know God. This is ultimately one of the oldest truths that we have access to. Because if you understand yourself, your ego, you will understand what God is not. God is not limited like your ego is. Your ego will die at some point, either during this lifetime with an ego death experience or moreover when your physical body actually dies. And all that is truly left is God, of course. God is the polar opposite of his creation. Within this creation, you have a temporary time frame in which everything decays. God, on the other hand, is eternal. To truly understand this, however, we have to get away from our head. He is correct here. We cannot understand it within our head because our head 
our mind is bound to time. Our mind is great at solving certain problems within time. We can do mathematics here. We can repair a car. We can think with a problem-solving mentality. However, the knowledge of God is found within the heart. We have to get away from our rationale in order to access this truth. You can study God through everything and everyone in the universe. Because God is not confined in a mosque, synagogue or church. True. But if you are still in need of knowing where exactly his abode is, there is only one place to look for him. In the heart of a true lover. Coming from a background of having plenty of spiritual experiences, I can only relate to this. Of course, I know that the dogmatic religious theological mind will discard this and some will even say that this is shirk. However, if you truly look into the matter of things, those deep spiritual understandings are only found within the heart. The heart is truly like a pathway, like a connection to God. We cannot access God in our everyday waking consciousness. It is impossible. It is created by God like that. In our everyday waking consciousness, we do everyday waking consciousness things. We go to work, we eat, we have fun with our friends and what not. God is not physical, therefore we cannot perceive him with the physical senses. For that we have to go back into our heart. And even here we are not speaking about a physical, biological heart. We are speaking about the spiritual heart, of course. Intellect and love are made of different materials. Exactly right. Intellect ties people in knots mm -hmm. and risks nothing. Yes. But love dissolves all tangles and risks everything. Mm -hmm. Intellect is always cautious and advice. Beware too much ecstasy. Whereas love says, oh, never mind, take the plunge. Intelligence does not easily break down, whereas love can effortlessly reduce itself to rubble. But treasures are hidden among ruins. A broken heart hides treasures. Oh man, I really don't like this voice. However, yes, the rules are correct. Yet again, this is what I've been saying throughout the video. Intellect and love are polar opposites ultimately because intellect in a way is the ego. It is useful for sure to understand things rationally. It is part of the whole. However, only love will transcend this limited understanding of the ego. And God is love, ultimately. Love is within God. Love only comes from God. God is the origin of all things. And therefore, yes, naturally, love stems from him. To truly understand God, why we worship him, is, of course, an act of love. What else is there? Of course, you can take the position that we have to fear God and therefore, our worship is just out of fear, but that is not the quintessence of things. How could it be? God is the all-merciful. God is the all-merciful that loves us. And therefore, of course, our worship is an act of love as well. If we remind ourselves of that, we can return to our heart, which is, yet again, the true connection to God. Most of the problems of the world stem from linguistic mistakes and simple misunderstandings. Yep. Don't ever take words at face value. When you step into the zone of love, language, as we know, it becomes obsolete. That which cannot be put into words can only be grasped through silence. Absolutely correct. Think about this logically as well. Words are so extremely limited. I know people worship words nowadays. Nevertheless, they are limited. If a foreign person looks at you smiling, hey, and tells you all kinds of things that you interpret due to their smile as positive, but in reality they tell you to you wouldn't know because your natural emphasis wouldn't be on the words, but it would be on the gestures of that person. You would try to understand the person without words. And this is really what God is ultimately. God is only found within the silence. 
Think about it, man. Why did the great man go into seclusion? Why did Prophet Muhammad go into the cave? Why did Jesus go into the desert? Why did Moses go onto the mountain? Do you think they did it out of fun or did they do it out of necessity? Why didn't they get the revelation just like that? Working, walking, talking to friends. No, they had to be secluded. They had to sit in silence in order to receive the wisdom of God. This is the only way it works. In Orthodox Christianity, we have a practice called Hesychast. And this is a prayer of silence, going deep within yourself, contemplating in silence, receiving the wisdom of God this way. Once you enter the zone of love, as he said here, words become obsolete, man. Listening to human language sounds like listening to a chicken quack, quack, quack all day, listening to a dog bark. It is so primitive. The true divine knowledge is is beyond words. Loneliness and solitude are two different things. Yep. When you are lonely, it is easy to delude yourself into believing that you are on the right path. Mm. Isolation is better for us as it means being alone without feeling lonely. Mm -hmm. But eventually it is best to find a person who will be your mirror. Remember, only in another person's heart can you truly see yourself and the presence of God within you. The presence of God within you, and this is something that the traditionalist, the standard narrative would of course claim as shirk. How can God be within you? This is absolute polytheism, this is pantheism, etc., etc. And this is why so many traditionalists discard the beauty of Islamic poetry. They don't believe that this has any place within Islam, that this is a bida. But the Quran as well asks the people to reason, and it asks about the people of knowledge who are the those people truly. Whatever happens in your life, no matter how troubling things might seem, do not enter the neighborhood of despair. Even when all doors remain closed, God will open up a new path only for you. Be thankful. It is easy to be grateful when all is well. A Sufi is thankful not only for what he has been given, but also for all that he has been denied. Yes, absolutely. And this comes down to the Quranic narrative as well, that everything is a test. So we should be happy about this test. This test comes from God and therefore ultimately it is good. Only because we believe that we should get something doesn't mean that it is right. Therefore, everything becomes a blessing. Patience does not mean to endure passively. It means to look at the end of a process. What does tolerance mean? It means to look at the thorn and see the rose. To look at the night and see the dawn. Impatience means to be short-sighted as not to be able to see the outcome. The lovers of God never run out of patience for they know the time is needed for the crescent moon to become full. Yes, absolutely beautifully put. Patience does not mean to endure passively, but it means to see the end of a process. Ultimately, when I was bodybuilding back in the day, I was patient because I knew where I was headed. As long as you have a plan, a direction, you can be patient. If you don't have a plan, then you don't know what you're waiting for, and ultimately nothing is coming to you. However, if you set your sail, so to speak, and your ship swims towards a set direction, then you can be sure of course, that you're moving towards that direction. And hence, you can be patient. If you take your phone and you put on Google Maps, you're traveling to a destination. It says 30 minutes. Then you know, all right, in 30 minutes, God willing, I will be there. Therefore, patience becomes automatic when it is bound to an outcome that you already determined. It's really important. As well, the part about tolerance here, it is not about discarding that the rose has thorns. No, it is about understanding, of course 
that you can hurt yourself when you touch the thorns. But nevertheless, it is about redirecting your focus from the thorns onto the beauty of the rose. East, West, South or North makes little difference. No matter what your destination, just be sure to make every journey a journey within. If you travel within, you'll visit the whole full world and beyond. Yes. This is something that you cannot really explain if you haven't had the experience. Yet again, people will say, ah, those mystical experience, all of this is blasphemous and what not. But truly, if you haven't had those experiences, you will never know. Only if you go within, you will see a whole landscape of possibilities that have been hidden from you. You can look outward as much as you want to. You can research online, you can read books, you can listen to people as much as you you like. The knowledge, however, is found within yourself. Even when you resonate with a person, you resonate within. If I say something that makes sense to you, it makes sense for you within yourself. If I say something that doesn't make sense to you, it upsets you, then it upsets you within. Yet again, therefore, no matter which knowledge we are talking about, even when it comes from the external, has to enter internally. And guess what internally we already have an abundance of knowledge of wisdom of beauty of love that we can access if we dare to do so the midwife knows that when there is no pain the way for the baby cannot be opened mm, deep and the mother cannot give birth likewise for a new self to be born hardship is necessary just as clay needs to go through intense heat to become strong, love can only be perfected in pain. Very deep, man. This reminds me of the Buddha who said life is suffering. The understanding that only suffering can transmute your character. I'm going to give you a bodybuilding example as well. If you want to live comfortable, you want to eat whatever you want to eat. You want to enjoy. You want to watch TV. You want to play games. You want to chill, bro. Do that, but you will stay the exact same fat slop. Nothing will change. Or maybe things will even get worse. Because you're not suffering in the moment, you will suffer later. Suffering is the name of the game. However, if you get yourself up from the couch, you go to the gym, you suffer in the gym, even though the suffering can be transmuted into pleasure as well. Nevertheless, you make yourself stick to your diet, you work out and whatnot. With this pain, with this suffering, you transmute your physical body. Through this transmutation of the physical body, of course, you're transmuting your mind as well. It forms your character. Discipline reflects within your character. You will have more self respect for the things that you do. Obviously, if you don't do anything, if you go the path of least resistance, you won't change whatsoever. This is an absolutely beautiful passage. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Shams Tabrizi, what a deep thinker this man is. Obviously, as the teacher of Rumi, he must have been. Those teachings, however, are not something that resonates with the majority of people, and that is totally normal. I understand. Most people are not mystics. Most people are not philosophers. Most people are not interested in poetry. And that is all fine, because we are ignorant. However, if you pair ignorance with arrogance, this is where we have an issue. Because so many laymen will believe that those great men were actually heretics. People that went against Islam and whatnot. They will point the finger without having any practical experience within those fields. This is pure ignorance and arrogance, guys. I said it before and I see it everywhere. I do not care for your religious label. What I'm interested in is to see people that have an open mind and can truly think for themselves, can truly reflect and can see the truth as well. I do not remember where I read this quote, but it was so absolutely beautiful. It was about truth and what it means that you will have people that will seek truth within books, over books, over books, over books, trying to find the truth. However, once you found the truth truly for yourself, within yourself, then you will see the people that are upon this truth. 
I believe that this was Al Ghazali. It must have been. So this is something that we can only experience for ourselves. If we go within ourselves and we find the truth, then we will see other people that know that truth as well. How else would you understand what is right, what is wrong? If somebody else tells you, how can you trust that person? Are people not all flawed after all? But yet again, guys, this is just my perspective. This is my approach to life. I have to experience truth. I have to experience it for myself to understand if it is right or wrong. I cannot just take another man's word for it. This is not how I function. If this way, however, works for you, that is great as well. I'm not here to sway anybody one way or the other. I'm just here to share my perspective. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you very much, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.